Do I still struggle with sin? Absolutely. Do I still have to put the, 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 the flesh under, the, under control? Does it rise up against me sometimes? Absolutely. Right. I have a compartment problem in my life. Right. What's yours? Let me share, you with, let me share mine with you. Um, I find myself as a driver, I tend to be a judgmental driver. Because I have a class B school bus license and I have all this safety stuff going on. And, and when someone does something that I feel and, or I know is not intelligent and is against the law and is silly, I, I say, what a, what, what a bonehead. What a jackalackle. Right? Ah, oh, Jiminy Crickets, what a moron. Oh, man, that guy's stupid. Oh, man, that guy's not. And, and even if I don't say it, sometimes I do. I'm by myself in my truck. When I'm driving, but I'm, these things are coming up, and, and my wife and, and God are working on me, saying, you got to stop those, those outbursts and stop judging those people. Did you drive good when you were young? Yeah, no. I have several cars in the, in the junk lot to prove that. Okay, then. Don't throw the first stone. See how I got back to the story? Our conscience... Is supposed to keep us on the right path so that we don't become or that we remember we once were like who we are judging. Our conscience helps us stay on the right path. The path of truth for the word. The path of truth in our images. The path of truth in our actions. We need the Holy Spirit. And the pastor has told us that he really wants to, to focus on the Holy Ghost this, this year. And that's why we're talking about the gifts of the Spirit. We're talking about the power of the Spirit. We're talking about the boldness of the Spirit. We're talking about shouting in the Lord. We're talking about unveiling the truth and seeing the world for what it really is. Getting our images and our words and our actions, our own actions, getting all these under control for ourselves, how we see and do these things, but also how we see the, what this is in the world. Hallelujah. I can't wait to get home and watch NCIS. Really. You shouldn't be, you should be, your heart should say, I can't wait to get home and listen to some scripture or read yeah. the word or pray with my wife or my husband. Hallelujah. I can't wait to eat. I'm starving. <laughs> How about God willing, I'll have time. God willing, God will have, will provide. Lord, give us our daily bread. One day you may walk in that refrigerator and you don't have a job anymore and it's not there. The food's not there. Now what? Oh, you got to humble yourself and ask a neighbor for some food, ask your pastor for some help or whatever. You've got to be careful. Because as we judge other people, that same judgment comes back at us. Right. And the Bible tells us if we judge people's heinous sins, oh, that person has an alternate lifestyle. They like to be called a he, a she, an it, a tree. And then we joke about it, we laugh about it. <laughs> That's so silly. And God says, be careful. Yeah. That's right. Be careful the words that you're putting out there. Be careful your, the images and, and, and the actions that you're doing. Not just in the sight of God, but in the sight of man. Yeah, right. It's true. Christians live in glass houses. Right. The world sees Christ through us or it doesn't. Right. And you'll know that by our fruit. <laughs> so, the corrupt conscience. I'm going to review this so that you understand, so that you... I have, I have parts of me that are corrupt, obviously. I've got to work on the name calling. Brother Steve needs to work on name calling. You can say that. Yeah. If I hear people telling me, hey, the more people I get paying attention to, the more help I can get. You know? Right. All right? The corrupt conscience is conditioned over time while living in sin and ignoring the alarm of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in Titus 1.15 that to the pure all things are pure, but to those who are corrupted and do not believe, nothing's pure. Everything's defiled. Everything's defiled. You don't want to end up like that. That's a, a corrupt conscience. The seared conscience takes time in unrepentant behavior. Unrepentant evil behavior. Unrepentant evil behavior. Unrepentant sin. And so we need to find the sin. We need to ask for the sin. Show me, my brethren. Chastise me when I'm walking wrong. Tell me when I've made a mistake. Yeah. My flesh is going to rise up right. against it, but my spirit needs to hear it. My conscience right. needs to be quelled. I need to restore yeah. that great spirit that is within me, 
the power of the Holy Spirit right. that can lead my life. And I need the counsel of God yeah. and the counsel of my elders. Right. And whether you like it or not, the counsel of your wife or the counsel of your husband or the counsel of your children or your grandchildren. Hallelujah. If somebody has told you something negative about you and it's really unscriptural thing that you are or doing and you hear it over and over again, take the hint. <laughs> take the hint. God. Hallelujah. A good conscience is powered by the Holy Ghost, period. Yes. A good conscience is powered by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit in John 16, 18. This is what the Holy Spirit in us does. Listen, listen. This is awesome. When he comes, that is the Spirit of Jesus. And when, you know, we argue. The Trinitarians and, and, the, and the oneness Pentecostal apostolics, we argue because it says, see, see right here, it shows that the Holy Spirit is separate. It says, I will send, Jesus said, I will send another. It's not another. In the Greek or Hebrew, it doesn't mean another thing, another one. It doesn't mean that. It means another type, another manifestation. Hallelujah. A different version, but same. Okay? In a different way. The Holy Ghost in us is God. In it manifested in a different way, right? A holy God living in an unholy vessel <laughs> that's going to, that's corrupt and will perish. But God can be in it because of what Christ did on the cross. Right. Hallelujah. Okay? So, so a good conscience is powered by the Holy Spirit. John 16, 8, when he comes, he will convict the world. Conviction! We, by our actions, by our image, the way we, the way we portray ourselves in, in how we look, the way we portray ourselves in what we say, the way we portray ourselves in what we do, Christ, the Holy Ghost, working through us, will convict the world regarding to sin. That means just by your mere appearance, people will feel guilty for the sins that they're committing. Hallelujah. Just by a word, what you say, when they ask you why do you not do this or not do that, you're going you're gonna to make right. either friends or enemies. Because they're going to say, oh, are you holier than thou? Get away from me. Right. Because they're going to sense the holiness. When, when you do something, when you give your, your only sandwich at lunch, to, to a homeless person who's obviously out of their brain and out of their mind and might even have a demon and you pray for them and give them a sandwich and everybody's like, don't mess with that guy. But you did anyway. They're going to see the conviction of sin. Hallelujah. 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 And, and righteousness. And in your acts, they see acts of righteousness that are done because you're powered by the righteousness of God. And judgment. Judgment. So out of us come all these things. Do I need to write it down? Guilt, righteousness, and judgment. Guilt, righteousness, and judgment. The Holy Spirit shows the world, convicts the world of those things through us. What a huge responsibility the Christian has. To walk right, to talk right, to think right, and to do right. I'm, I'm preaching myself happy. I'm convicting myself. I need this lesson. Because I have areas where I have a, a, a seared conscience in some areas. I need to awaken. Yeah. And that Brother Pete says over and over, I got a preacher who preaches the, the, the real being awake. And a preacher who preaches the real boldness of Christ and holiness. And a preacher who preaches the real word of God, only the word of God. We've got people here who are building up the body. Hallelujah. You are building up the body through your words and actions. And we're doing it and we're affecting the world. Either, either they're going to hate us or they're going to be converted. Right. There's no in between. Right. Some family you think they're tolerating you. No, deep inside they hate you. Right. If they're not converted and they don't right. have nothing to do with God. There is some part of them that doesn't want what you got. Right. And that's Hallelujah. hatred towards Jesus. Not, not towards you. I take that back. They hate you because they first hate Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Bear witness. Bear witness. That's what the conscience does. It bears witness to, to what we're putting in ourselves and putting out of ourselves. I speak the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it through the Holy Spirit. Your conscience will confirm that you did the right thing because you'll be able to connect what you what you saw, what you said, and what you did, you'll be able to connect it to what the Word of God says. 
That's how you know you're walking right. Sanctify them, which means cleanse them, which means separate them by your truth. Pete, Pete, what's the truth? His word. It's what he says all the time. One of my favorite verses that he says. Sanctify them yes. with your truth. Your word is truth. Right. What is truth, Pilate said? What is truth? Truth isn't subjective. Your truth is your truth, and my truth is my truth. If that's the case, then we all get to heaven. No matter what we do. Or we all don't go to heaven. Because you don't, since you don't believe it, that's, that's what's right for you. Since I don't believe it, that's what's right for me. But God has said certain things, and he's written those things in stone with his word that right, cannot be changed. Right. So he created them. Man, male and female, he created them. That's it. Not he created the male and female and, and something else. Hallelujah. That's an offense. Hallelujah. That is going to convict the world when we say such things. Yeah. And, and we have some end time preachers here who are not wrong. It's not going to get better. What we, what we live for, the convictions that we have because we want, because God is giving us and creating in us a clean heart. A clean heart. A clear conscience. Powered by the Holy Spirit. Created me a clean heart. Psalm 51. Created me a clean heart. King David. Created me a clean heart. The more we repent, the more we admit our, our futility, trying to do things ourselves, and, and the more we admit that we can't even walk without God being in us and on us and right. through us and, and constantly, the more we rely on God, the, real, the, the more we realize the world wants to be autonomous. Everybody wants to be their own individual. And God didn't create individuals to stay individual. He said, where two or three, two or two or more are gathered, there I am in the midst of them. So he created us to be individuals that want to get together corporately and be in the same mind. The mind of Christ. We, are, we have the mind of Christ, saints. We have the mind of Christ as we get ready to close. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's, let's talk about what we need to get... To get this Holy Spirit driven life, to get this conscience that is now clean and clear. How can we sleep at night? Not because we don't realize the sin that we're doing and we've squelched the sin and we just ignore it, but we can sleep at night now because we know we've done good. Guess what? You shouldn't be able to go to sleep at night without being able to get on your knees and ask God to forgive you of the sins of the day that you committed, yeah. whether you knew you committed them or not. Right, right. Then you'll sleep better because yeah. you'll know. Yeah. That's right. You'll know that you ask for a gift for forgiveness, and you and, you, and and Lord, show me where I went wrong today. Oh, but I know that I for sure remember doing this and this, and I know it was wrong, Lord. Uh, forgive me, forgive me. Then you can sleep, because then if you die, because tomorrow is not promised, death is promised. Tomorrow isn't promised. Then you can go to sleep knowing where you're going, and God takes you right then and there. Then you can go to sleep. Then you can go to sleep. Because you have a good, clear conscience. What do you do to get one? You get the Holy Spirit. We're going to concentrate on that in the, in the months to come. I don't know how the pastor has, has put together his plan in regards to what he's going to be teaching you and what he's going to be talking about. I don't know the rest of the ministers. I don't know every detail, but I know that since the beginning, we've all been focusing on the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And we've all been focusing on the power of God through us. And so, as, as these things unfold, it's by the Spirit of God that, that it, it has all this continuity. We must first repent. Saved or not, repent of the sins that you commit. Yes. We must be baptized. Yeah. Yeah. Just like the lost have to be baptized, we need to be baptized daily. Baptized with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, with evidence of speaking in tongues. Make it a habit to speak to the Lord in tongues as you're kneeling in your bed praying, speaking in tongues. That's the time. That's the real time to speak in tongues. Right. That's the best time to speak in tongues other than prophesy. Amen. We need to be baptized. And then what is what is this? What, what, what is the saying? What is it? The, the, the act of salvation. The acts of salvation. Uh, the, the plan of salvation is still a plan for every believer, but in a different way. Be baptized, right? Repent of your sin. Be baptized, and what? Receive the Holy Spirit, right? Which is a promise. Yeah. So we need to be assured. We need to be assured that we have the Holy Spirit. We need to be assured that we know God. 
If you come to church and you can't help it, the Holy Spirit is drawing you, but he's not in you. Right. If you're, if you're talking to God and you're praying to God, the Holy Spirit is with you, but he's not in you. If you're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, the Bible tells us you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit Amen. by evidence of speaking in tongues. And if you haven't spoken in tongues, it's because you're trying too hard. Or you're not trying hard enough. That's confusing, right? You gotta let go of you. Let right, go of your flesh. Right. Let go of your flesh. Right. Sometimes a person receives the Holy Ghost in their deepest, darkest sin. Yeah. Because they don't want it anymore. They're right. crying out to God. Praise and the God. Holy Ghost comes in them right. and fills them. Hallelujah. And once we can lay hands, church, yeah. hallelujah, just like in the book of Acts. When they laid hands on them, they began to speak in other tongues. And they received the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then their lives were changed forevermore thereafter. A growing grace in Christ. This is our destiny. And if you are here, it's your destiny. And if God has put people in front of you, it's their destiny. And God will use you the way you would let him. God wants to take over. Lord, bless each conscience here. Lord, bless each person here. Lord, that they would receive the gift of the Holy Spirit if they don't have it. Lord, that the Spirit would come upon them and draw them so that once we can lay hands, those hands will bring about the gift of the Holy Spirit. That we can pray, Lord, and put the desire in the hearts for salvation and for the gift of the Spirit more than ever before, Lord. Touch each individual here that even if we are saved, that we desire to open up compartments in our lives that we have ignored you in and let you into every part of our soul, every part of our mind, with all our hearts, all our minds, all our bodies, all our words, all our actions, all our thoughts. Lord, we want to give you glory for everything and worship you with our total being. And we need your Holy Spirit to guide us. And for those of us who have been putting the Holy Spirit, a squelch of the Spirit, and, 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 and restraining the Spirit, Lord, I right now speak a prophetic word of release of the bondage that the flesh has over the Spirit, that there may be new life in each individual, that they may be able to live for Christ in an enormously powerful, new, and living way in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for your time.